No antics, Jacob V. Weekly back on the road. We're on our way to Madison, Wisconsin. Then we're going to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm in the van, and for the first time in the van, we have the hog. Hog? The mule Is hog. The mule Delanor hog. Not to be confused with the Yule Delanor log. The Yule log of Delanor. And uh, my wife is here. And Tyler's driving the Honda Odyssey. And uh, I haven't heard much from the spirit of my dearly departed great-grandfather, Sylvester, so I don't know if he knows we're going to Wisconsin. But I feel like if the need arises, he'll uh, he'll reveal himself. Miles, I saw you play this week at the Get Down with Kirkos. Yes, I did. Uh, great... great uh, Great vibes is what I was going to say. I didn't see, like, the whole second set uh, because I had been doing parent-teacher conferences. Lord have mercy, God. Ooh, God. And And, uh, my thing with Kirkos is Kirkos makes me want to play keyboard. You know what I mean? Which So I'm glad I did that this week because I have to go play some keyboard abroad this evening and, and over yonder. And, um... And I listened to a podcast you guys were on, or not you, all of you, but Jacob and Jordan from Kirkos were on, um, just kind of with the origin story of the whole thing. And I didn't necessarily remember all of those details, so that was really uh, uh, helpful uh, to me. But um, my thing with uh, that is, um, are you guys touring this spring too? Yeah, next month. Doing uh, Fayetteville, Waco, Texas. Two nights in, or we're doing, then we're Bisbee, Arizona, Sedona, Arizona. Two nights in Vegas, Denver, Omaha, Kansas City, Columbia. Then back to St. Louis for yeah. Pops Blue Moon. Yeah, I really like um, the, I, oh, when is Vegas? That's 419 and 421? Yes. Because you guys are trying to go to fish at the Sphere on 420? Possibly. Yeah, and so, but you're playing the night before and the night after, which I think yeah, is yeah. brilliant because I do think you guys are a really contemporary interpretation of uh, something that that demographic would enjoy. So, if people are in town to see Fish at the Sphere, I feel like Kirkos the night before and the day oh, yeah. well, after yeah, it would be great. The nineteenth and the twenty-first, we'll be doing late-night shows, so people that are at the Sphere can come see us afterwards. Yeah. We're gonna, yeah. I love that. Try to wrangle in all these, uh, uh, these high hippies. I think psychedelic music has has probably continued to to develop and progress constantly since its inception. But people always affiliate it with its origin in the late nineteen sixties, and that's not really the whole thing. Oh, it's yeah. It's it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing beyond. Yeah. And beyond the festival scene of the 1990s, I mean, those festivals kept happening, yeah. and and things kept developing. Uh huh. And um, now there's so many festivals, right? And then you know, sometimes they're in the middle of the woods, and that I really like. Yeah, yeah, I like some shade. When I you like wake a up. I like a wooded area. Yeah. And um, I love the beautiful state of Wisconsin. Has Kirkos been to Wisconsin? We played at the Rigby where we're playing tonight. You did? We did, yeah. You did play at the Rigby. Uh-huh. What can you tell me about it? It's very cool. It's cool? Yeah. It's oh. The venue's on the third story. God but there damn is it. an elevator. <sighs> shout out to elevators. Um, we are going to make a list of all the shout outs Tyler could possibly squeeze into the episode this weekend. Um, I've been trying out a new thing with the camera footage from these trips where, because I don't necessarily want to record myself on video in the, in the van, just talking. Cause it's not 
glamorous. You know, I've been I've been making the video for the pod episodes like B roll of the scene. Yeah. As we travel, uh-huh. I don't know if that's catching on or not. Oh. The footage is lovely. I got a fresh SD card loaded up. I mean, I got a hundred gigs to shoot. Let's go. So we're just gonna shoot everything. Oh. I'm just gonna I'm gonna shoot. Oh. I'm gonna blue. And um, another really guys, there's here's a tip. You don't necessarily have to bring your own drums on tour. If you plan effectively, we were just listening to the set from Cleveland last week at Dunlops in Cleveland. Shout out to Cleveland. And uh, everybody shared a kit that night, and the recording sounded great. The drums were spicy, sizzling. Yeah. Crispy. There you go. They were nice. Sometimes you never know what you're going to get if you decide to go that route, but uh, right. I was pleasantly surprised. Pleasantly. And uh, Dee Dee's here, but he's napping, so I'm not going to bother him. I, he needs to store up his chi. Uh, he was probably up all night cranking hog. And my favorite thing is this fucking scenery we got to sit through on our way to the great state of Wisconsin. We have to pass through hell to reach heaven. And Illinois is fucking hell to me. I think I hate Illinois more than Kansas. I fucked up at the Kirko show. Can I tell you a story about the Kirko show the other night at the get down? I'm um, all ears. Is that uh, we were outside, me and Molly, and I was talking to a guy, Andrew, who introduced himself to me because he recognized me as a member of a hit new band called No Antics. And I was telling him how we were on tour, and he was asking about it. He asked about it. He said, how's the tour going? Because, uh, anyway, and we were describing, you know, Ohio and Idaho and Iowa. It's hard to keep them all straight. I don't know why we keep all the names. Why don't we just name them the number in which they joined the union? And I said, for example, Missouri would be something like 23. And Molly looked it up, and it turns out Missouri was 24. Ooh. Pretty close. And you know who beat us to the punch? The goddamn People's Republic of Illinois. Ooh. And so I may have mentioned something about how I fucking hate Illinois, but maybe these two f- friends of this guy I was talking to may be diehard Illinois people. Because their vibe was weird after I said that, but they didn't say anything. And then I came back out later as I was leaving, and they were introducing themselves to some girl, and she was saying she lived in some area they lived in. It's like, oh my god, us two, 618. They're all three Illinois enthusiasts Ooh. and I just volunteered unprovoked that I don't like the People's Republic of Illinois and I just I feel like I may have burned that market on the patio with the get down I feel like those three people there's not much of a market in the 618 though that's what I'm telling them yeah. I'm saying guys if you had some if you would just that's an buy a house and burn. have a baby then Illinois would be flourishing but you're all just sitting over there being sad drinking milk we're going to the milk state wisconsin um i'm on spring break next week spring break i'm out here in miami (laughs) ski miami party in the city when the heat is on welcome to To Miami. miami i'm going to miami we're definitely fucking bumping some Will Smith on oh, the break. Yeah. We also should experience some increase in audio quality this time around because I have figured out how to record in the car without having to use the internet. And uh, it turns out I just had to make this little window bigger so I could select the thing. You learn every time. If you don't force yourself to try to do a podcast on the road, you don't learn how to do it, Keenan. Uh who else is doing it like I'm doing it? Tyler is like a soundboard of myself. I, Tyler remembers my key quotes and will spit them back at me. Who else is doing it like I'm doing it, Kaden? And, uh, my God, look at... There's not even a swamp up here for us to point at. It's This is like they're growing wheat grass. It's the Harmon Swamps and... Uh, London Tyler Lowe of Harmon Dobson is on the road with us. Him and Molly are in a different car, and they're. Uh, I don't know when we're supposed to see them again. Oh, off Broadway. Oh, oh, the T. Yes, yes, yeah. That man offered me cocaine in the bathroom, and I said, "Oh no, 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 no." 
He offered no, no, me no, cocaine no, no. in front of my parents. That's not that weird. <laughs> it was weird for me. What? <laughs> He offered him cocaine in front of his parents. In front of Miles' parents, Miles was offered cocaine by the... I had to hold it myself. I'm balancing a laptop. I have a Sennheiser E945. You know what I was doing at 2 a.m. this morning? Looking up custom colored versions of this. I saw that. It looked like an oil spill. Well, they do the iridescent Illuminati finishes. Oh, yeah. And uh, Never so let I know your next move. Yeah. So as soon as um, if we can sell Movie Boy to AMC theaters, like the license, yeah, I'm gonna buy us all a custom iridescent Sennheiser E945. Nice. Uh, we only need, yeah, we only need a, a couple grand to get a whole kit of custom Sennheiser E945s, premium German engineered microphones. Uh, Prince and Jack White were early adopters of the Sennheisers. I used to always see them in those videos and I was like what are those and now I have a whole box full of them and I love bringing them to venues we're also recording from Dun- uh, from Cleveland and it was just the vocal quality that I could be in control of was just great you maintain some of that silky smoothness you're tired right now what'd you do last night you hog did you have a little rendezvous you had a little rendezvous I'm gonna I'm you know what we'll be right back and we're back. We were listening to Will Smith in the Honda Odyssey, and Tyler had a very hot take. He thought 1997, Big Willie style, paid a lot of stylistic homage to Method Man. Certainly Method Man a la 1994 on yeah. Will Smith's rap hiatus. I was hearing a lot of, uh, he was like using the similar flow to Method Man, like a less grimy Method Man. So we're thinking Will Smith took his first hiatus from rap to uh, pursue acting. Yeah. To great success. And while he was gone, Method Man killing the New England flow. To Cal. If you listen to Bring the Pain Judgment by Method Day. Man, you could t- it's like a minor key Big Willie style. Yeah. I was going, na 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 no, 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 on Bring the Pain. So Will Smith was kind of biting Method he was, Man. He was saying, this is where the re- this is what the people need, and so this is the real hip-hop that I'm going to make radio-friendly and mainstream so you can listen to it in your ni- 1990-something Ford Windstar. And he also did that album with Redman. Redman? Redman. Blackout, but that might have been after Big Willie style. So, yeah. updates, uh, Madison. Uh, people are panicking about the weather. Yeah, uh, we had a band that was coming in from Kenosha that's going to sit this one out. It's probably for the best overall, but the show is still on. We're still trekking, and we're. I mean, the accommodation's already done, and I I do these these deals I get for the hotels that are non refundable, but that gives me access to pricing that would otherwise be. Uh, Inaccessible, so we're going. And we're, we're coming we're, up with some kind of. We're going to be there. I have AAA Plan Platinum. B's. I will have a tow truck drop us off. We're in, saying we hotel. might book a show at the Red Roof Inn. Yeah, I mean, if for some reason the venue chooses not to open today, uh, I have all this gear, and we're going to be at a Red Roof Inn. Open up that lobby. Guitar Center will be open. I could go rent a couple PA speakers, and we could just you know make it happen. We'll do it at the parking lot. Remember the Death Cab for Cutie? I will possess your heart video where it's cold. Uh, I, I think I made I, you watch I, this. I probably Molly's. have seen it. Back it's in the um, day, yeah. it's got a long instrumental intro. It's in D minor. It's a great yeah. song, and there's performance footage of them playing in like a giant or, freezer. Uh, or you know, hit up the local Denny's. Or we'll you'll, you know, I mean, here's the thing with the employment crisis. I only have to win over a couple of employees. Yeah. For pretty much any business that will be in front of to let us do whatever we want. If I negotiate favorable terms, if I really listen to what the employees want and need and what they prioritize, I can make them love us. And what the employees want is fem grime. If as long as I can play rock and roll and sell some shirts, this will be a successful trip. Yes. So I'm committed to those things. I told Tyler, there's probably a university in town there's some kids that would love something to do especially if all the cool bars are going to be closed yeah. but the weather's supposed to be wrapping up by now so by the time we actually get there i don't actually think it'll be a problem I remember that time it was snowing when we loaded in at platypus and we thought yeah. no one was coming we actually had a great and then turnout the room looked full when we played as long as the it room was, looks, no, it was it, full when i look up and there's people i've never looked up with no antics and seen no one that was um, it's never happened that was the show with Synthetic Sun I believe that was the free show even when we played at the record store the first time we ever played yeah. there were people there 
People there were love people, the grind. There were people to talk to. There were people to interact with. And this is a huge part of what's kept me in the game is, you know, I obviously have an aptitude for technology. And I love toys. And I love gear. And I love, you know, that kind of stuff. So, And, I've, and that's been everything. If I didn't start playing music, when I was a kid, my father and my grandfather were both um, gunmen. Gunmen. And, uh, you know, taught me how to you know, use firearms safely and being from Missouri, it's just, you know, everyone just kind of has access to that growing up a lot of the time. Yeah. Now, that being said, um, you know, I probably would have been into, you know, that kind of stuff. I have a cousin who's a Marine and he used to build bombs. There's a bomb at the bottom of the lake and, uh, Oh, uh, Oh, well, hold up. Hold up. Sorry, I got a phone call and then it turned the method man back on. Yeah. What's that bomb called? L- uh, what? lady hope or something. I don't know what you're talking about. You said there's a bomb in the middle. Uh, at the well, just of that the lake. you know, um, my cousin uh, was uh, improvising some some explosives, and he was going to test one out in this lake, oh. but it never went off. Oh, okay. Well, I was reading this Kurt Vonnegut book. So it's still t- down there. Time quake, and he mentioned something about a bomber being under a lake. I think it's called like Lady Hope or something. Lady Hope. I think. Don't quote me on that. I would. My retention is still not the best. I wouldn't. Despite um, how much I read. Yeah. Uh, I am starting to get you. As we move farther north, I'm getting used to the landscape. It is a beautiful sunlit morning here yeah. in... Are we still in Illinois? Uh, I couldn't tell. Uh, we must be in Illinois. We haven't hit Chicago yet. We're taking Illinois There's all the no way, way up through yeah. Chicago. Uh, it's actually noon. It just it just hit noon. It's 12-12. What did that sign say? World's largest covered something. Something. There's too many words for me to read in a meaningful um, time span. Uh, what were we talking about? Uh, I was talking about... Will Smith, Method Man, the show is still on. Kurt Vonnegut. Kurt Vonnegut, there's a bomb in the lake. Um, that, uh Oh, so the gear thing has really kept me into this. And one of the things that you see it shows is always at least a couple of people who also play one of the instruments and they want to talk about the tools of the trade. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I love being able to have a good enough seat where I can notice details about what kind of equipment people are using on stage when I'm at a show. Mm -hmm. So that's a part of it that keeps me in it. Some people, you know, like the environment to meet new people. Some people are just going to go to that place and drink alcohol anyway. And if there's (laughs) something new happening, that's, that's even better. And uh, so whatever your situation is tonight in Madison, Wisconsin, I'll see you there. The Rigby, yeah, 9 p.m. Uh, hell or high water. Yeah, I'll play in front of it. If the venue's not open, I'll play in front yeah, of it. We'll I'm just send play on miles. the porch. I'll send Miles to the Crown Mart to get 90 ham special lights, and we'll sell them oh. for a dollar. It'll be a great time. Yeah, that one person, I think, in Cleveland was really digging your keyboard stand. My what? Your keyboard stand, how it like folded in? Oh yeah, it collapses it and collapses, it becomes like yeah. the battering ram from the movie SWAT. <laughs> yeah, with uh, with LL Cool James. I was th- since we were listening to Will Smith, I was like, we should put on some LL. Oh, I mean, I'm never I'm never too good for some LL. Mama said, "Knock you out." Mama said, "Knock you out." I'm gonna knock you out. Right, who is your favorite rapper from Wisconsin? <laughs> That's a good question. I probably couldn't name a rapper from Wisconsin. Wisconsin. I can name some from Michigan. Uh, yeah, like Eminem and right. Danny Brown. And ICP. Yeah. Um, Quelle Chris, I believe, is from... Google thought I meant Wisconsin Rapids. Um, <laughs> Grand Rapids. Oh, DC the Don? Uh, there's a lot of rappers in M- M- Michigan. There's a great music well, but scene But we're going to Wisconsin. Young Gravy is from Wisconsin. Yeah, but you mentioned Michigan. Yeah, I did mention that. Rappers born in Wisconsin. Yeah, I couldn't tell you rappers from Wisconsin, but I could tell you rappers. DC from the Don, Key Michigan. Swag, Key Swag, Brother Ali, Brother Ali, Trustin, hmm. Ishdar. I haven't heard of any of these guys. Yeah. Wave Chappelle. Wave, I like that. That sounds like a No Antics song. Yeah. Wave, Wave Chappelle needs to do a collab with Harmon Dobson. There's a... Harmon Dobson featuring Wave Chappelle. Sometimes I just listen to random rappers and artists that like are on the fans also like on Spotify. You know, like, oh, if you like this artist, you like this one. One of them I came across was uh, Nelson Bandela. Vandela? Bandela. Bandela. Like, it, you got the bands on you. Nelson Bandela. 
I always thought that was a good uh, rap uh, name. Uh. Do you have a favorite MC, Jacob? Um, you know, if there was a rap album that I really ever bonded with, it's hard to say. Um, because there's certainly some historically. Like, when I was a kid, I found a CD in my dad's closet called Bitch Better Have My Money by AMG. <laughs> and it's really, really, really good and hilarious and very entertaining. Then, um, also, one of my favorite movies, probably my number two favorite movie of all time, is Die Hard. Okay, yeah. And the opening of Die Hard has a really great Run DMC moment. Oh, yeah. And... Um, uh, Prince was also adjacent to, you know, some rap stuff in the 90s. Yeah. And so, like, uh, he was friends with, like, Dougie Fresh and, like, people like, like kind of has been like that. Uh, I like KRS-One. Um, I like KRS. Yeah. I have a deeply historical perspective on hip-hop. And so I, I really like to go back and listen to stuff from different moments. Yeah. We talked about Outkast a lot when we were on our way to Lawrence. Love I Outcast. love Outkast. Love Outcast. But groups, I feel like, are cheating. I also really, really love Frank Ocean. But that's kind of R&B, hip-hop, yeah. like, crossover. There's definitely... I mean, it's more hip-hop probably than traditional R&B. But it's uh, he's kind of a singer. He's not just a rapper. Um, Every time I listen to Outkast, I don't know if we mentioned this on I the I love Lawrence. Kendrick Lamar. Yeah, Kendrick. I can't decide who I like better between Big Boy or Andre I used 3000. to do This Is How We Do It by Montel Jordan at karaoke. <laughs> yeah. And that's got a good rap verse. Did you hear Kendrick apparently dissed J. Cole and Drake? Well, whatever. <laughs> Kendrick Lamar could beat the shit out of both of those dudes. Yeah. J. Cole's playing a very, very dangerous game being... Uh, like what? trying to be authentic and independent, but also be like mainstream and like, and and like, like tour, in bed with, the with Drake. Yeah, touring with Drake. So I mean, you know, and Kendrick Lamar was on a Taylor Swift song. So I'm not saying Kendrick Lamar is not on the Illuminati. Yeah, but I'm but saying you know if we really want to talk some shit, Kendrick's a lot younger and a lot scrappier than them. A lot uh, out of the three of them, he's the most he's the, real. He's, if if I saw the three of them about to square up in a bathroom and we were throwing money down on it, my money's on Kendrick. I wonder if he's gonna put out another album now that he's off of a uh, Top Dog. He's off of what? That label he's been on for years, Top Dog Entertainment. Uh, I mean, he probably doesn't feel like he needs them. Yeah. So, you know, he's also probably going to try to transcend the medium and do something that is, you know, inaccessible in some way. Uh, what do you think about uh, James Blake and his whole uh, his comment on the music industry? And he's like doing this thing where it's like you subscribe to an artist's vault, like. That's what I do with my Patreon. Yeah. I mean, that's what we were talking about with Omar Rodriguez Lopez. It's yeah. like, listen, like Louis C.K. with his stand-up that he's always talking about his his primitive website that he just sells everything on. Yeah. And that, um, you know, it's like, wait, I have the technology now to give you top-shelf quality content. Yeah. And if you pay me directly, it's cheaper for you. It's better for me. And you can have access to everything. If you give me $5, I'm making more money on my whole catalog off of you than if you listen to it all. I feel like that could... <laughs> on Spotify. I feel like that could definitely work, but like... But that's yeah. the thing. He's already had success in the mainstream avenues to where people are like, oh, I know James Blake. I like James Blake. I'll go find him on his independent platform. Yeah. The problem is that everyone's always complaining about is people that don't have that built-up audience yet to siphon money out of. I thought he was cruising up on me. Is that a, f is that a Lincoln? I feel like um, as long as Spotify and iTunes are like doing their thing, it's going to be really hard. Well, we but talked about this in the Instagram thread that um, yeah. you know they're trying to pass legislation of some kind that would somehow make uh, the minimum payout for a stream a penny, which is insane. Well, because it's so much more than it is now. A penny is so much more money. I mean, um, Spotify is never going to do that. What is it now? Oh my god, it's fractions of a penny. Oh shit. It's like um there's like it's like 5017 of a penny. Decimal yeah. Of a penny. Yeah, the, the, end of the music industry is really Well, and here's the thing, I've been up. teaching my kids about this to try to drum up some buy-in about the music we're going to play and whatnot. And um I've been telling them that uh you know, we watched Ken Burns' whole series on jazz. 
yeah. from PBS, and uh, it talks about you know physically how the music was allowed to start in New Orleans. Like how the instruments got down there and how the people that ended up playing them got down there. And then it takes you on the whole journey of how those people adapted throughout the 100-year cycle of the record industry. The Victrola comes out in 1901. And that's really the first time where you could capture music in a way that you could sell it to somebody to enjoy later. It's like inventing the to-go box for the first time. I feel like... Because before that, if you made a living at music at all, it was live performance exclusively and so then we went on this hundred year journey you know all the way through and i'm talking about tom petty and him suing his record label and john fogarty suing himself or whatever the record label sued him for plagiarizing himself and like all the way through to napster and metallica and now you know artists today with like snoop dogg saying he got 70 billion streams on spotify or something and they are no it was 1 billion streams i feel like and they gave him 70 if thousand camp was just bigger that'd be better this thing artists. Bandcamp is not for users Bandcamp is for bands yeah Bandcamp but it's like so exists for people that want to start putting their their band on the internet you know it's really great for that but it's not for the user yeah it's it, it just like supports the artist directly though. absolutely yeah. but it's not i mean that's, I wish not, the, it was, that's not the platform that's going to do it i, I wish think it patreon was is way more compelling i've been putting our live sets on my patreon because there's only like 12 people yeah. that could access that and those are the people that would come to <laughs> our shows if they were uh i feel like Bandcamp is just so underrated and, but they can listen to our live shows like like a podcast you know what i mean because they can leave it running in the background and it's a seamless app we were listening to it on patreon here in the car that um yeah <clears throat> that Bandcamp is just not integrated or updated like that because it's you know it needs the money whoever i mean justin timberlake bought myspace at one point really and uh was i thought they were going to revamp the whole music thing on myspace and that didn't happen somebody like that needs to come in and say Bandcamp, let's make it competitive yeah yeah if Bandcamp could make it competitive and and spend a couple million dollars on some yeah. development because i whatnot. love Bandcamp. yeah i do too and um you know if you're into communicating or, or touching artists that you want to support directly that's a great way to do I, it i but love how they you need can, to join the the market space i love how you can like directly buy merch from a band that's through. the thing blinded by stereos vinyl is only for sale on Bandcamp or yeah. it shows because it's the it's an easy easy way for us to get it out to the people um and uh you know otherwise you know you got to pay fees and stuff for even just hosting a store somewhere You know, uh, we'll be right back. It's rough out here. We're back. The boys are up. <laughs> We're on our way to Madison. We just stopped at Roadies Atlanta, and that's Atlanta, Illinois. And uh, there's a Wally's 57 miles out. And I think Wally's wants people to skip the Roadies to come straight to Wally's, but I couldn't wait another hour to pee. I've also never been to that restaurant of food. Oh, food. The food yeah. Is that a sign on the Casey's though, or is that a separate restaurant? It just says food. That's a separate restaurant. It says food and next to the Casey's <laughs> food and slots. <laughs> Palova. <laughs> Fuck Madison. I'll play here in Atlanta, Illinois. We're so excited. We're on our way to Madison, the Red uh, Roof Inn. Shout out to Sydney for yeah. giving me that half burrito. Sydney yeah, shout Vogel out. Uh, of the Vogel Twins with a burrito. <laughs> she came through with a burrito. What is funny about hooking a brother up they're with a burrito? The Vogel Twins, they're not twins. Can a bitch get a piece of a burrito? <laughs> uh, if you have any leftover burrito for pieces for Tyler, can a bitch get Tyler's burrito piece? It's not a swamp. It's not a swamp, and it's. I'm not from a swamp, and they're not the Vogels are sisters, but not twins. They should, but he is from a swamp. Should, what I'm saying is they should rebrand as twins. Like how me and Dieter are rebranding as brothers. Yeah, we you are guys brothers. Are, we just gonna start saying we yeah, are. We're you not guys are my sons. We just are brothers. But you're half brothers, really. Yes. Dieter's father was Australian, and your father was either an alligator or a crocodile. <laughs> but I can't trust him to be the one to tell me which he was, and I don't have a sample. We can find a sample. We, ha I, you're gonna have to get a sample from Tyler's father, which I haven't been able to do in all these years of hearings and subpoenas and. Alligator or crocodile? He shed crocodile tears. 
That's what you. That's what you won. That's what you one minuted me for through a Gardetto. Yeah. What is that you're eating? Uh, okay, never mind. <laughs> I burnt Tyler out while you guys were asleep. He's done all his words for the day, I think. Yeah. He's got he's got a shout out he's queuing up though. Three, two, one. Uh shout out to Peanut Butter Crackers. I knew it. I yeah. knew he had one. I knew he had one. He's the shout out king of the swamp. He is the shout out king of the swamp. Shout out to shout outs. I just like Yeah, he likes shouting them out. He's not he, I, we don't give him a mic all the time and so you know when in doubt, shout it out. Shout it out. You know? And you know who I like to shout out the most? The devil. Shout out the devil. Levi I, Strauss and I was company? actually going to say the exact opposite, you demon. I was going to say the Lord. <laughs> yeah, shout, out, shout out Jesus Christ. Shout out Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jehovah God Almighty. <laughs> for my new hit single. Wait, wait. So I said so Jehovah. Like, what is like... So I know Jehovah Witness... Is the Jehovah's that walk, Witnesses refer what to is a that specific, religion? They refer to themselves as a specific higher sect of uh, believers who are the limited VIP group of the only people ever allowed to get into heaven. They, they believe something like only 300,000 people can get into heaven and they don't celebrate holidays and all kinds of stuff. So where but, did this come from? Well, it's just like when you say Church of Christ, it's like saying Jehovah's Witnesses. It's to them like saying God's Witnesses, the true Witnesses of God. Uh, and it's an old name for God. So has this been a long... Has this been a thing as long as, like, normal religions? Or is this more of a um, Scientology type thing? Um, it's probably somewhere in between. I'd bet it's somewhere in between. It's older than Scientology. What do you think... Okay. What would it take for you to be brainwashed into Scientology what would they have to say to you um Travolta (laughs) I mean they would have to offer me quantifiable improvements to my life that I felt like I couldn't get without them but like how do you fucking believe it though so okay what are their views can I start with the Jehovah's Witnesses because you asked me that first yeah Jehovah's Witnesses is a non-trinitarian Millenarian Restorationist Christian Denomination as of 2023. You're just using a bunch of more words that I don't know. Hold on. Oh. Um, (laughs) The denomination is directed by a group of elders known as the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses, which establishes all doctrines. They believe that the destruction of the present world system at Armageddon is imminent, and the establishment of God's kingdom over Earth is the only solution to all of humanity's problems. So, Jehovah's Witnesses, a big part of the thing, especially in the 21st century that people talk about with them, can you turn the air on, is that they um, they believe that Armageddon is going to happen at any minute, and that they're always being prepared to be the chosen redeemed in Christ. They want to be the ones that get raptured and they believe the only way that the human race moves forward is for knocking us on doors to be saved in armageddon they believe the world has to be destroyed to transcend uh uh the imperfect nature of uh, human life oh. <clears throat> but they also believe that only a select few of even them are allowed to even get into heaven and that there's a literal government of heaven that's going to descend on Earth to to rule in the future. Like God's up there with a with a mallet, like a gavel, and in a hierarchy, like a like a a system of like a like a, a parliament of of you know um, angels and saints, and that the it's an actual organized structure. So it's cool. They used to send a real bad bitch to my house, so I would pray with them. But they never sent her by herself, so I quit answering the door. Worth the wait. That's what they're saying. They're saying don't go to Rody's Atlanta. They're saying go fifty more miles to Wally's and spend twelve dollars on a bag of jerky. Don't don't shit your pants in the car. Just don't, try. Don't stop the car. <laughs> Fill that quick trip cup up with piss and keep going because yeah. Wally's is on the horizon. Yeah, you can dump it. Uh, apparently, Bucky's has a problem where people die in the parking lot. Bucky's? Uh, I was listening to a podcast that they were on tour in Texas, and they were going to Bucky's, and so they would look up news stories about the Bucky's that they were at, and it was always like so and so found dead in their car at Bucky's. <laughs> it, 
Well, I, I'm sure that's definitely some of them. Some of them could be other medical incidents. Some of them could be criminal in nature otherwise. Bucky's is just a South thing, right? That's a Southern. Mostly Texas, I think. Hmm. But it's a lot like Wally's. And Wally's is the one that just got built in Kirkwood, right? Or not Kirkwood, but Fenn. Yeah. Yeah. That's beyond the swamp. Yeah, I heard they have really good popcorn. Yeah. I like popcorn. I like the barbecue sandwiches. I like, uh, of course, the jerky. The fountain sodas are lovely. I like their selection of ice. They got a good thing going with their form of ice. It's a crushed, chewy kind of ice. I feel that like you could, you could probably like tell us which gas stations have the best ice. Yeah, I was in the middle of that. I thought I do love <laughs> Quick Trip, but it, I mean, Quick Trip really to be competitive. <laughs> Uh, across the the market space needs uh, to be fully functioning. So if I can get either form of ice and all of my favorite things at Quick Trip, Quick Trip always wins for me. But the Quick Trip's around me. Sometimes shit quits working for a couple days. Yeah. So then, you know, I could fall into the arms of a mobile on the run. What's your favorite kind of ice? Is it crushed or cute? I like the pellet kind of crushed oh, ice. Yeah, like Sonic or, yeah. you know... Um, but some people call it crushed, and it's not always the same. Some crushed ice is too fine. It's like a snow cone almost. Yeah. yeah. It just melts right away. Um, yeah. And Funks Grove. Look at that tree. Funks Grove. Can we go shoot some content on that tree? Where? The tree over there. Oh, the one in the middle? Look at that tree all by itself. I don't know. We might get shot. Yeah, there's, there's a fan. They'll be like, I was scared for my life. I was scared for my <laughs> life. That man was saying those were his sons. That man and was he 400. Was mom, and this is Illinois. And I am not going to allow a sex predator to come onto my property to shoot content in front of my lone bush. That man was at least 700 yards from my house. He had no boots on. And he drove, boots on. They drove that... I don't even know what I could call this car sensitively in like uh, in a role play situation. They wouldn't like that this is a Honda, is what I'm saying. They said they brought that damn Honda in my fence line, officer, sheriff. I told you I don't put up with no nefarious characters. Once they cross the fence line in a foreign car, it's over. No boots on. No boots. This man had on croc boots. Croc. He said they were croots, and so I shot him twice in the sternum. I mean, seriously, how are you going to walk through a field with how no boots? How are you going to walk through a field in croots? In croots? Answer me that. You cannot, Sheriff, this is Atlanta, Illinois. <laughs> Atlanta, <laughs> Illinois. That's almost like, wait, what is, isn't there like a, like a Rome, or like, Oh, we have Mexico, like Missouri. Paris, we have like Cuba, Paris. Missouri. There's a Cairo, Illinois, which is spelled like Cairo, but they they call it Cairo because they hate the East. There's like a pe- Versailles. Versailles. You want to talk about a dead town like Cairo, I, Illinois? You ever drove through there? I, I've stopped at that exit. Yeah, it's like it's I've never dead. been through the town. It's like a ghost town. Cairo, Illinois, on a Saturday night, I might jump in. Cairo, Illinois. And just at that barbecue stand that I don't actually think is open. Yeah, it's like just like one strip, but it's it's just a ghost town. Ooh, a nice barbecue pulled pork sandwich sounds pretty good right I now. I did identify a good barbecue place that's quick serve, like the place we liked in Kansas City that's Ooh, in between the venue and the hotel if we want to do girl. that. Do they have Zemans? Uh, I don't know if they call it a Zeman, but I'm sure they'll whip you up something <laughs> like it. If you pull up a photo and say, listen, hey, I have a Zeman, they're like, what? <laughs> Excuse me, Miss Wisconsin Barbecue Lady. I'm a wary traveler. If I show you a picture of a sandwich, what do you think you can do me? You think you could whip me up a couple Zemans? A couple Zemans? You all got bacon? <laughs> can you put uh, mac and cheese on my Zeman? Why is Wisconsin known for cheese? Well, that's where they historically make a lot of the cheese. The Wisconsin Dells is one of the largest dairy exporters in the world. Oh. Uh. And so uh, they're known for that. I've actually been just to tour it as a child, and we ate cheese curds the whole way home. Really, dude? Uh, cheese curds are fucking cheese curds delicious. Are the shit. Oh um, my yeah, god! Yeah, Wisconsin cuisine. I think to a lot of people, they think it's just Culver's, but there's also um, exclusive beer in Wisconsin. A company called New Glarus makes beer in Wisconsin. It's really hard to get in St. Louis, so every time I come up here, people are. So, oh, are you going to drink that or are you going to bring some back or whatever? I'm California sober, so I'm bringing my own DCs from Ferguson because I'm a patriot. Patriot. 
I got these at the Sam's Club in Ferguson. That's like that's like Bud Can't Select one? in the yeah, St. Louis. Course. Yeah, I'm gonna get you one. Of course, everybody had those. Yeah, and you're like, I don't know. Do you That's want my, me to? Can we talk about this right for a minute? Now? That's just the greater problem with our civilization, and I can point to many examples of this that you guys have experienced. Is that people hate other people's children. <laughs> People yeah. hate other people's children. If you're at a restaurant, even with your own kids, you don't want to see other people's kids there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And people, like, when you go to a, any kind of a church service, they do, like, ten minutes, and then they kick the kids out. But I've also noticed, um, specifically, I know a few teachers who teach, um, like, young kids, and they're the craziest ones, also. No, those like people are not insane. well. I mean, they agree to go to school forever and to live in that environment forever. I am going to be in sixth grade until I'm 60. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Yeah, I feel like I feel like sixth graders like they're taller. No, well, are sixth graders tolerable? This is or the are thing. they kind people of aren't like even more interested annoying. enough in other people's children to really know? You know what I mean? And as a whole, they're so different. They're just like any other group of people and that it's really, you know, um, but then the problem becomes that you have to, you have to refer to them as a population, but the kids themselves are not necessarily consenting to being a part of a population. So what would be easier to teach? Like, like, okay, so obviously not like easier, but what would be like, I guess easier to teach like sixth grader, like eighth graders or like kindergarten? Um, kindergarten definitely has, like, challenges that you would understand, but they are still so sweet and lovely and funny in kindergarten mm. that kindergarten is always a nice break in the day. Like, if you, like, I used to work on a campus where I, I would pop into a lot of different classrooms, and if I had a really hard morning in, say, fourth grade or eighth grade, I could go down to kindergarten and feel you know a lot better. Yeah, you know that it's going to be... Yeah. Now, it's also not for... Because they're, they're also not, like, making fun of you yet. Like not when you quite. get to sixth and seventh Sometimes grade, that's when they start like hating their teachers ooh, and like and all that kind really, of shit. They'll say really mean, oh, yeah. Good. They'll say really mean adult sounding things as they get older. But when they're little like that, they don't even have much of the vocabulary to even employ. Even if they do say some bad words, sometimes as a kindergartner, it's funny and kind of out of context. My kindergarten wheels. Oh, 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 I was getting in the Grand Marquis, loading my Diet Cokes into the trunk from a long day of teaching, and the kids were on the bus leaving, and they said, Mr. V, get in this beat-up ass car. Where the wheel at? Because I don't have a hubcap on one of my wheels. And I said, I'm sorry, where the wheel at? They screamed it at me out of the school bus, and I wanted to say, you're on a bus. I get to take this car wherever I want. Oh, my God. But they were gone, because the bus was driving. And I looked at my wheel, and I said, where is the wheel? I'm missing where, a hubcap too. Where, I'm just I have it in the trunk. My stepdad just didn't put it on when he <laughs> fixed my tire. I uh, I drove my '98 Camry for seven years without hubcaps. Yeah. Without any of them. <laughs> the guy at the Volvo dealership made fun of me the other day. Why? He said, "Oh, is that your car out there with the black wheel?" <laughs> he said, "Sir, you know what it's and called." I said, "I said, sir." We're, we're, ooh, five, oh. My kindergarten teacher, who, she was, like, awesome and, like, a really fun teacher. And she would, like, you know, go out to, like, recess and, like, play kickball and shit with us. Turns out, um, so one of my friends dated her daughter in, like, high school and shit, who turned out to be, like, a insane person. And her mom... And uh, so she turned out to be really extremely racist, which we didn't know when I was in kindergarten. But she told um, there. So there, there was a big thing on Facebook where you, know, you were at a private school. Yeah, that's also you'll notice that the people that will because a lot of private schools, especially around St. Louis, that broader area, um, and a lot throughout the Midwest. Private schools often pay a lot less than public schools, and so the people that are there. Are kind of being wait. They pay less. Oh yeah, a lot of them. Now there's really competitive ones where sometimes they pay more, but public schools have federal funding yeah. per uh, student, and so to incentivize people to teach in those more unpredictable environments, they can build out over time all these grand unionized sort of benefits and salary increases. Or as a mm. private school, 
when I got out of college, a private school would have started paying me like twenty nine grand with a BA to teach Jesus English. Jesus Christ. It doesn't make any sense. Wow. Uh, and, and you'd be uh, stuck with a bunch of racists, apparently. Well, and that's the thing, too. I mean, I have real anxiety about the, the greater education crisis, certainly in my own community, because I remember people I knew when I was a kid saying, oh, we sent our kids to Catholic school for X, Y, Z, and there were always never a good reason. It was yeah. always to keep away from a certain somebody or to... You know what I mean? It was always about, like, privilege and power and segregation, and it was really sad. And then it was 1996 when I started kindergarten, and I'm as weird as I am, but it was the 90s, and I was in a Catholic school, and it was really, really hard. They really were not equipped to handle all of this. You know what I mean? So you'll find that, Didi, like you were saying, that sometimes you may see somebody that when you're a kid, you're like, oh, that's a sweet kindergarten teacher at a private school, and then you realize, oh, she's broken crazy. (laughs) Yeah. She's uh, she's actually fueled by hate. Yeah, dude. She it was, was She was nice to us because she thinks we're supreme in some way. It was insane because I had such, like, good memories. And then I see her posting on Facebook, like, go back to your country and oh, stuff like that. And I'm like, whoa! whoa. Yeah, I had teachers that I worked with <laughs> in former districts that were, that were really, really conservative about very, very specific issues in a way that didn't make sense for them being, you know, in service in a public institution. But we see it with everything. We see it with politics. We see people that work at the DMV and are license office and they won't let people get married even though they're legally allowed to get married oh so they get fired God. and then half the people act like they're a hero i mean these things I just happen had the worst like month of like dmv trips i went back five fucking i thought you were saying times. dmt trips DM- but he, he meant visits to the dmv the department oh, of motor vehicles oh uh, yeah i was on dmt shout out That's pete buddha judge who's that he was the mayor of South Bend, Indiana, and then he ran uh, for the Democratic primary. Now he's the S- Secretary of Transportation. Huh. He's a CAA operative, and he's uh, but he's a gay mayor from Indiana. So they were trying to push him on that and be like, "Look, we have a big gay mayor." There's this big, there's this big like. Uh, Turns out he's re- an op, bruh. There's this big like retired CIA dude who's been doing a bunch of podcasts lately. I don't know if you've like seen him. He's been on like Schultz podcast and all that shit. But he's, like, somewhat um, talking about, like, more or less everything that's, like, wrong with the CIA. And... Oh, the um, the guy with the hair. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I love him. He's, I mean, obviously an operative. Well, that's what he was... That's what they were saying. They were like... They were like, I feel like you're still in it and you're just not telling us and you're coming here trying to, like, collect information for shit. And he just kept saying that he's not in it and stuff. But I'm like... How easy is it really to just get out of something like that, like with nothing? Well, and his perspective is nothing, that, like, as a catch, once you're yeah. no longer in the CIA, your friends that are still in the CIA still can talk to you about stuff, and you can, you know, work private intelligence, and that, which is crazy, but people don't understand that, like, um, just like we have some more understanding now that there's private military and security forces. You know what I mean? That like, it's not that weird to think of um, like people that went to fight in the Ukraine because the U.S. would not officially deploy troops there. There were people that volunteered to be paid privately to go over there and train people and coordinate things. Mm. And it's the same way with intelligence. Wait, the CIA is not private, is it? No, huh? But that's what that guy was saying is that, you know, Trump didn't want to work with the CIA, so he, he worked with a lot of what we call private intelligence, which are just people that mm. are given a lot of money and then they could do whatever they want with it to get the information they want and they're not bound by the same rules and if they get mm. caught, they're not implicated as the U.S. government. Mm. Mm. I hate to take you on the whole trip. The sickness is deep. So yeah, those are probably probably like a bunch of ex. Cleopatra ex- was black. Well, yeah, which I'm for. <laughs> 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 yeah, man. So, have you been? Have you heard about? I know, fucking everybody seems to be talking about this lately. But the the pyramid in uh, uh, Antarctica. Uh huh. What's up with that? Give me some information on that if you got it. You want me to look it up? Yeah. Pyramid in Antarctica. Because apparently it's like like some crazy like five times the size of the ones in like you know Egypt and. I got it. <laughs> Every time I do a voice thing, it turns Will Smith back on. I have not heard of that. Yeah. No. Apparently it's like ridiculously like like just way bigger than all the other ones and it's still like you know they're all kind of like in a like like they're all 
Oh, yeah. fucking, I don't know, somewhere like something longitude, Bill latitude. Bill yeah, something like that. It's like also like that. Mysterious pyramid found peaking from below the ice in Antarctica. Yeah. Below the ice. Peeking up from below the ice as the ice is receding, it's revealing a pyramid. Is this an actual photo? Uh. 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 Give that Lenny Kravitz. The Milky Way. Wait. The Milky Way. What came first, Lenny Kravitz or Lil John? Lenny Kravitz. Because they both want. They both give it the oh, good God, old. We, yeah. We, are you saying Little John is just Lenny Kravitz twenty years later? I'm saying that Lil John is is Lenny Kravitz. He's doing like a um But he's he, doing like a Garth Brooks. You know what Brooks. their hair is awfully similar. He's doing like a Garth Brooks uh wait, what was his alter Chris ego? Gaines. Chris Gaines kind of thing. Like a dragonfly. Like a dragonfly. A dragonfly. A dragonfly. A dragonfly. Eat the sun. I wanna eat the sun. <laughs> Uh, uh, bam, bam, bam. Way, Lenny Kravitz go. has yeah, He's he that man is jacked he's for like jacked a fucking I've, 50, I've seen 60 his pee-pee. You've seen his pee pee? Yeah, he was wearing leather pants with no underwear at a festival and he busted a move playing guitar and his pants ripped open and he was hanging. Oh, uh, you were just gonna act like bro, that wasn't planned. He's got a real sweet piece on him. We're just gonna act like Lenny Kravitz. He's got a real sweet piece. The dude who's like piece. known for like being did you sexy. See that interview he did earlier this year and cut he took a all those photos of him in, in his apartment in like Paris. Huh? He's got like a town home in Paris. And he just did a photo shoot there for a magazine. He's like 60 years old, but he's like wearing no shoes with leather pants. And he's like, yeah, on a I think that's like what made me think of it. Because he's got like fucking hardcore washboard abs and shit. Oh, we're in Bojangles country. Bojangles. That's the first Bojangles I've seen since we've hit the road. Shout out to Lenny Kravitz's dong. Yeah. Shout out to Bojangles. Shout out to D'Angelo's dong. So is it a hog? It's, I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's real sweet. It's not like <laughs> it's it's not like hyperbolic. It's not like um, it's not like boogie nights. You know what I mean? It's, it definitely looks like a real piece, but it's a sweet one. It's yeah. the sweet one. It's the sweet one. Isn't that Prince? No, that's um. Uh, actually, that? you know who that is? That's um. What's his name? Justin Diaguardi from season one of American Idol. Huh. The runner-up from season one of American Idol was Mr. Sweet 20 years later in the Dr. Pepper commercials. It's the sweet one. It's the sweet one. Milky Way. The Milky Way. So is there any other information on that? Uh, I don't know. I'd have to read and hold this microphone. And yeah, not worth it. Not if worth I it. read in the cut van, that, I get car that, sick. Cut that. Cut that. Cut that. Cut that. Cut that. Cut that. No, I don't need it yet. But if I read that whole article about Antarctica, I'm going to need edit, a drum of me. Do you edit these? Because Sometimes, yeah. I mean, it depends. If there's certain things that I don't... I'm, I'll clip very, very small things. I feel like... I like to leave the whole segment in and just remove a name or a number if I need to. Because I feel like there's things that we say cut, but we, but they don't get cut. Well, do I go through and cut the entire segment every time we say cut that, cut, cut that? that? No. Cut that, cut that. But if you know, if we use somebody's last name or we refer to something in a quantifiable way that may be inappropriate, I try to go through and cut those details. Like if I were to say my kindergarten racist teacher's full name. Right. Yeah. But just don't do that. It's more. Which I'm not going to do. That. However, we are recording in Reaper right now, so I have a lot more control than I usually do. I was recording in Soundtrap because I know how to do it, but um, now I fixed Reaper, so it works just fine. So we're uh, we have more power. I can edit offline. Huh. And uh, Gucci Gang. Shout out to Reaper. Reaper. Shout out to all the pairs. Shout out to Love. And that means I can record all the sets in Reaper too, and it'll be a lot easier. Yeah, I had to go back to the grocery music video and blur out my own address. <laughs> which YouTube lets you do in YouTube native and post. Oh, that's nice. But I had, my wife was like, you put our fucking address in that video. And I had to go through and YouTube was like, you can blur it. And I'm like, I'll blur it. And so there's just a little blur over my address. <laughs> and, and all it takes is one. All it takes is one person to be like, oh, his address is in that video. I'm going to go wear him like a coat. <laughs> I'm going to go to that address. They're, they're, it's, that's where the movie starts. It's the guy watching the video in front of my house. And he, and he pauses on my address. And he locks his phone and he walks up and then it's the opening credits like of, of 
the latest he goes, he goes, I like that American man. Horror Story. American like Horror Story, Femme Grime Stalker. Who is this man? 